So yesterday I shot a video that was addressing how many people use the term hell week for the week that they quit smoking. And I pointed out the inaccuracy of using that term for a, a, a week period, saying or giving the impression that if a person quits smoking, they're going to go through this hellish withdrawal that goes for seven days. Most people who detoxify from nicotine do not go through uh, a physical withdrawal that's, that's totally hellish. And they don't go through a withdrawal that lasts seven days. Uh, physical withdrawal peaks in 72 hours and really gets easier after that. And some people do have a really tough experience during those 72 hours. And some people, it's only a one or two day event. Some people quit and don't have any bad withdrawal at all. So just giving the perception that there's this terrible week that's always incorporated when a person quits smoking, it's inaccurate. A more accurate use of the term, though, of the, the hellish experience that people have regarding smoking, it's not the week they quit. It's the day they relapse. Because once a person relapses, they've lost everything they gained up to that point. And they may start to feel some immediate effects of what smoking used to do. They may get their cough back right away. Uh, they will start to often feel irritation in their throat and it burns and they may get other side effects that are unpleasant. They're gonna smell like cigarettes again. They're gonna have to go buy a pack, a pack that, hey, if they were off for years or decades and now they're going to buy the first one, it's gonna cost a lot more than at the time they quit, multiple of what they used to spend on cigarettes. And then there's the real hellish issues involved. If they get diagnosed with a problem, or if they get a problem that's not uh, hard to diagnose, they have an, a heart attack, they end up in an intensive care unit. They have a stroke, they end up in an intensive care unit. Hey, that's gonna be a hellish week. Uh, it doesn't stop there though. Hey, in the case of a stroke, they may be impaired in some ways for the rest of their lives from certain functions that make their life much more difficult. And then there's the diseases that don't have a, a sudden one-time event. The chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases like emphysema, where when they get it, they're, they're already suffering by the time they get the diagnosis. That's why they go in for the diagnosis to start with. But then they have to go on with this condition forever, as long as they're alive. And as long as they're smoking again, they're destroying more and more tissue every day. It's getting worse. Emphysema is a hellish disease. When I used to get people in clinics who had uh, lung cancer and they would compare notes to the people who had emphysema, uh, the emphysema patients often would envy the lung cancer patients because they had a disease that they sometimes got treated and survived if they didn't get uh, if they didn't get successfully treated, they would often die within weeks or months. Emphysema: the people live for years, but they're suffocating for years. They can't breathe. The existence that these people have, where getting up a flight of stairs becomes impossible. Eventually, uh, going outside it becomes difficult. Eventually, uh, they can't get out of bed but they're still alive and they're still suffocating and they're struggling and death is their only way out. That is a hellish existence. So when using the term or thinking the term of uh, anything to do with a hellish experience from smoking, understand it is not from quitting smoking, it is from not quitting smoking and getting the problems that not quitting smoking causes. And the way to minimize your risk of ever having to deal with that kind of existence again is by now making and sticking to a personal commitment to never take another puff.